Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. In a previous video, you should have learned how to set up and fill out simple Punnett squares. This video will describe how you can use the rules of probability to predict the likelihood of inheriting more than one trait using the product rule. If you have a background in basic Punnett squares, you might be able to read through the example problem below, above and determine the probability of having a child that is heterozygous for trait B or for trait D. But what is the probability that both of these events would occur together? Sometimes, instead of evaluating one trait in a cross between two parents, you might want to determine the probability of two, three, or even four different events occurring together. For two traits, you can fill out a 4x4 four four Punnett square, as illustrated here, to determine the probability of these events occurring together. As the image shows, this can get a little bit complex. If you wanted to look at three or four traits simul simultaneously, things would get a bit ridiculous. For these reasons, we will use a different technique, referred to as the product rule, to evaluate more complex genetic crosses. The product rule is a means to simplify Punnett square problems. Instead of trying to look at the likelihood of multiple events occurring at the same time, you can find the probability of events occurring by themselves. In the scenario on this slide, two individuals are heterozygous for two different traits that have been crossed. The first trait is represented by the letter B, while the second is represented by the letter S. If you were asked, what is the probability of an individual being homozygous recessive for trait B or for trait S, you should be able to answer this question pretty easily based upon your previous knowledge of Punnett squares. The answer to each of these questions is one-fourth, or 25%. To figure out the probability of an individual being homozygous recessive for both of these traits, you would have to take the probability of the first event occurring, one-fourth, and you would have to multiply that times the probability of the second event occurring, which is also one-fourth. When you multiply one-fourth times one-fourth, that is the probability of these two independent events occurring at the same time, you should arrive at an answer that is one-sixteenth. That is all there is to the product rule. Use information from a problem to fill out however many Punnett squares are necessary, one for each trait, and then multiply the probability of each of those events occurring separately to come to a final conclusion. We'll go ahead and try a sample problem. This one is quite easy, as the genotypes for each of the parents are provided. There is no need to decipher genotypes from clues within the problem. This problem reads, if an individual who has the genotype capital D lowercase d, capital G lowercase g, is crossed with an individual who has the genotype lowercase d, lowercase d, capital G, lowercase g, before reading any further, it's important to fill out the Punnett squares with the information that's provided for this type of problem. When filling out these Punnett squares, it's important that only one type of letter, or one trait, is assessed at a time. For this problem, I will start by dealing with all the information that has to do with the D trait. I went through this problem and boxed any information that I thought was relevant regarding this trait. Boxing, highlighting, or underlining this information can help you sort through the tremendous amount of information that you have in these product rule problems. Next, the parental information regarding the D trait needs to be put on the outside of one of the Punnett squares, as shown here. Hopefully you're very comfortable with filling out Punnett squares at this point. The next step of this problem is to fill out the D Punnett square, as shown on this slide. Now that all the information regarding the D trait has been taken care of, it's time to move on to the G trait. Again, both of the parents' genotypes should be placed on the outside of this Punnett square, as I've already taken the liberty to do. Finally, I took the time to fill out this G Punnett square, shown on the bottom. Now that you have completed all the Punnett squares necessary for this problem, you can begin to answer the questions that are being asked. The first question asks, what percentage of the offspring would be homozygous recessive for both traits? Homozygous means you have two form of the same allele, both uppercase or lowercase. Recessive indicates that these letters should both be lowercase. I have highlighted all the boxes that are homozygous recessive for both of these traits. You can see that two-fourths, or one-half, of the offspring would be homozygous recessive for the D trait, and one-fourth of the individuals would be homozygous recessive for the G trait. If you use the product rule and multiply the probabilities of these two separate events occurring at the same time, you would arrive at the correct answer. One-fourth, the probability of being homozygous recessive for trait G, times one-half, 
the probability of being homozygous recessive for trait D gives you one eighth, or 12.5% of the offspring that would be homozygous recessive for both of these traits. This would be the answer to the first question in this problem. The second question asks, what is the probability of this, that is, having a child that's homozygous recessive for both traits, happening twice in a row? There is a 1 in 8 chance of this event happening once. In order for this to happen twice in a row, you would have to take the probability of the first event occurring, which is 1 8th, times the probability of the same event happening again, which is 1 8th. 1 8th times 1 8th is 1 64th, or 1.6%. That is the answer to the second question in this problem. There would be a 1.6% chance of having two children in a row that are both homozygous recessive for these two traits. The second example problem provided on this slide is a little bit more difficult, as you need to start by figuring out the genotypes of the parents before carrying out the same steps from the previous example. This problem reads, if an individual who is heterozygous for trait D and homozygous dominant for trait B is crossed with an individual who is homozygous recessive for trait D and heterozygous for trait B, Again, the first step of this problem is figuring out the genotypes of the parents. In these sorts of problems, there should be one Punnett square for each of the traits or each of the letters that are provided. The first part of this problem, boxed here, says that an individual is heterozygous for trait D. Heterozygous means that you have one capital and one lowercase letter. These have been placed on top of this Punnett square. The next step that makes sense to me would be to finish off the D Punnett square. I looked throughout the rest of the problem and highlighted information that I thought was relevant regarding the D trait. The problem suggested that you would cross this individual with another that was homozygous recessive for the D trait. Homozygous indicates that both of the letters would be upper or lower case, and this problem suggests that the individual is homozygous recessive, meaning that both of these alleles must be lower case. These letters, too, were placed on this top Punnett square. Now that I've finished filling out the D Punnett square with the potential offspring, it's time to move on to the B trait. The first part of this problem that has to do with the B trait, which is highlighted here, states that the first individual is homozygous dominant for this trait. Dominant refers to capital letters, and homozygous means that you'd have two of the same allele, so there should be two capital Bs placed on the top of the box of the second Punnett square. The next section of the problem that has to do with the B trait suggests that the individual is crossed with one who is heterozygous for this trait. Again, this means that there should be one capital and one lowercase letter. Since both of the Punnett squares are now filled out, you can answer the questions that are provided at the end of this problem. It says, what percentage of the offspring would be heterozygous for both traits? I have highlighted all of the individuals from these Punnett squares that would be heterozygous for these traits. Two-fourths, or one-half, of the offspring would be heterozygous for both the B and D traits. If you multiply one-half times one-half, as you need to for the product rule, you would arrive at the correct answer for this problem, which is one-quarter, or 25%. In some circumstances, more problem solving will be necessary to determine the genotypes of the parents. The purpose of this video is just to introduce and practice how to set up and solve problems using the product rule. That is the end of this video, exhibiting how to use the product rule to solve problems involving Punnett squares and probability. If you are interested in learning more about genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.